Let me start by saying this was probably my favorite Coachella I've been to, but it was kind of a mess. And yes, it's been a few days since the festival, but weekend two is right around the corner, so it's still relevant to talk about it. I feel like it was kind of a mess in the way that not a lot of people cared about it this year. Online, there wasn't as much noise as usual, except for all the drama surrounding Frank Ocean's performance Sunday night. I feel like before that, people were just kind of like, oh, Coachella is this weekend? I didn't even know. But I'll say my personal highlights this weekend were Willow, Labyrinth, Blackpink, and Metro Boomin. Literally all so amazing. And if you follow me on Instagram, then maybe you saw a little tease of what my Coachella was like, including possibly sort of maybe a photo of what I was wearing one of the days. But to get into what actually went down at the festival, there were a few things that people were talking about this weekend. From rekindling, celebrity sightings, disasters, and influencers hanging out that maybe wasn't for the best. There was a lot. So to start, Shawn Mendes and Camila Cabello sparked up some conversations this weekend after being spotted together, acting like they were back together, kissing, holding each other, dancing. Sources were telling media outlets that the two of them were not exactly back together, just hanging out with each other. But fans are loving these videos that people saw of them enjoying the festival together. All the comments I saw on any of the videos were just so positive, wanting them to be back together, loving on them, which is crazy because I remember when people used to think that they were just some fake PR couple. So to see them actually get love this time around, I'm like, okay, I'm here for it. You guys are really cute. So wishing them the best. As for other things going around, people were wondering if Kylie Jenner was going to show up with Timothy Chalamet with all the rumors going around about the two of them. But the two of them were not spotted together at the festival. I don't even think Timothy Chalamet was at Coachella. Kylie was, but nowhere near a Timmy. As for Kendall and Bad Bunny, the other Kardashian-Jenner couple that is pretty hot right now, and maybe not hot in a good way because people are really upset about it, but they're a hot topic, that's for sure. And they were giving the haters everything that they didn't want because there were videos of them together all weekend long. And this video of Bad Bunny went a viral because people were hearing Kendall's laugh in the background. They felt like that was her hair blowing around. And they were once again feeling really upset about the fact that he's choosing to hang around her. Throughout the weekend, he was seen with her several other times, including this photo Kylie posted on her Instagram, where he's in the background sitting with Kendall on the golf cart. And they were seen watching several sets together over the weekend. Even though some people thought that he was maybe denying the rumors about him and her being together during his set on Friday, when he was on stage, he was talking to the audience about headlines and not to worry about him because he knows who he is. And some were interpreting this as him basically saying, don't believe the headlines about Kendall and I. But as the weekend went on and people started to see videos of him and her together, they were like, that's definitely not what he was talking about then because they're looking like they're together. Aside from people talking about relationships this weekend, let's talk about drama surrounding sets. As usual with weekend one, there were some technical difficulties, especially at the main stage, and Bad Bunny kicked off the weekend with some technical difficulties when he brought out Post Malone and the two of them experienced some audio issues. They were trying to figure out how to kind of perform together still, but it really wasn't working out and it was really awkward and it didn't really end up happening. Now as for the big discussion of the weekend, Frank Ocean. Probably the most anticipated performance for a good majority of the festival, just based on what people were saying and the amount of people that were wearing his merch on day three. Frank had not performed in like six years, and he had been a promised Coachella headliner since 2020, and he was rescheduled to this year. At the festival, Frank did not have any merch, and he also did not want his set to be live streamed. There were tons of people who got to the festival bright and early, right as it Open, I believe the doors open at noon and they were running to the stage to try to get their spot for him. And Sunday was the hottest day. So not only was it super freaking boiling that day, but people waited basically like 11, 12 hours 
to see him. And honestly, with the vibe of day three, I wasn't really sure if he was going to perform at all. When you were hearing that he's not doing merch, he's not doing the live stream, I was just like, I don't know if he's coming out, you guys. Like, I just, I don't know. I had my expectations on the literal ground. And he doesn't really perform that often. It's kind of like seeing a unicorn. So I was just like, I don't really know if we're going to get to see him. But let me tell you, everybody that was there really did have this, we're about to see a unicorn mentality because there's multiple stages at Coachella and there's a lot of sets that overlap. So not everyone always goes to see the headliner. I've gone several years now and my friends and I, when we want to see the headliner, but we don't want to be sausaged in the pit, there's this one certain spot on the left side of the stage that we tend to go to. It's more chill. You have space to dance around and vibe. But when we went to stand here for Frank Ocean, you guys, thank goodness we got to this spot an hour before he was supposed to go on because it was so packed. People were touching like we were almost in the pit or something because the anticipation was so high for his performance tons of people were showing up for him and couldn't wait to see what was in store for us he was set to go on at 10 5 but as the time kept passing people tried to get some sort of service to see like if it was canceled because we were just getting worried on sundays the festival has a curfew due to sound ordinance and it has to end at midnight friday and saturday the festival can go until one and both Bad Bunny and Calvin Harris went overtime. So as it was getting close to 11, people were getting worried like there wasn't going to be enough time for him to perform. And when he did eventually start his set, it was just like people walking in a circle on the stage. And for a minute there, it was like, this is it. This is all we're going to get. You know, this is it. And when he did start singing, people couldn't really see him. Unless you were close to the stage and could peek through the equipment that was around him, he was really covered up for the most part. It wasn't until halfway through his set that I could actually see him from where we were standing because before that, it was only this big screen that everyone was really watching and seeing his face. And truly, for a good chunk of it, I was like, is Frank even in the room with us or are we listening to this on Spotify? <laughs> there were random moments where they showed the security guard dancing and then there were parts where it felt like a rave. There was a random DJ that came on and people were clearing out like crazy. In the beginning, it felt like we were in the pit and then all of a sudden there was tons of room because people were just like, what the heck is happening? Stassi Baby and her friend group were with Noah Beck and they were standing right by my friends and I and they were making TikToks, you guys. They were making TikToks. They were just like... They seemed just like everybody else, super confused as to what was going on and slightly disappointed. I know not everybody felt that way, but I'm just talking about the people that were around my friends and I at the time. I know there's a lot of mixed opinions and I know there's people that really did enjoy it. So we're, you know, we're going to get into all the opinions. But at the end, when Frank randomly just said that the show was coming to an end, I think people thought it was a joke at first. They told his curfew, so that's the end of the show. Thank you so much. That was it. The lights came on and everyone was just kind of like, okay, that was that. And just like confused and wanting to know everybody opinion and like i said there's been mixed reactions because some of my friends did go close to see him and felt like they loved what they saw since they were close enough to see him the whole time which some people they were close and they didn't even get to see him my friend just happened to be tall there's people saying that it was the worst thing they ever saw some people defending it saying it was his artistic choice and also saying that he came to coachella with his brother and that his brother had passed three years ago and he's still grieving and him performing at coachella at this place that they used to come together is really hard for him. There's people arguing that he shouldn't have done it then. Some people are saying he would have been sued if he didn't do it, so he had to do it. And I don't know. There's a lot being said. I personally will say that I felt like he just didn't really want to be there most of that time. He seemed kind of upset during it when he would randomly like cut the song. He seemed frustrated with the people on the stage with him. Somebody also took a video from the side of the stage where he was just sitting, but there were times where it did seem like he was having fun, but it wasn't when he was singing, like the parts where they were just playing his song and he was vibing to his own song. It seemed like he was happy and having fun then, but I don't know. It was an experience. I will say that I'm not upset at it because it is something that so many people were talking about and it was an experience. 
But I think if I was like a diehard Freak fan and I had gone to Coachella just for him, because there are a lot of people that did go to Coachella just for him because he never does performances and they wanted to see him. I feel like maybe I would be like a little disappointed, especially if I couldn't really see him. And like I said, I didn't really have any expectations for it, but I had seen incredibly well thought out performances this weekend where people just gave it their all, wanted people to have such a big experience. And for this to be the last set of the night, it did kind of just feel like, oh, okay. Well, I guess that was that. If I was closer, maybe it would have been different, but here were some of the reactions I saw going around. Someone said, thinking about how chronically online folks complained about Rihanna not doing more during her halftime performance, even though she was slash is pregnant, but are now defending Frank being an hour late to his closing set and just hosting what was a glorified listening party. Not to always make it about gender, but it is relevant in every profession. And if a woman did this, she would not be taken seriously by the music industry or anyone anymore and the media would ruin her yes mental health matters but he made a commitment to headline one of the largest music festivals in the world and he should have kept it or made plans ahead of time to let people know he wasn't going to be able to do his full potential frank performed after an unimaginable loss during what was historically a lonely time period for all covid remembering how lonely that was not seeing anyone but family and losing one of the closest people to him not only did he come out and perform he did it all for him because going to coachella was a way to bond with his younger brother even though Frank didn't necessarily want to, he still went anyway, and his whole performance was dedicated just to that time. He will always miss his brother. Flashy performance or not, he experimented with what he wanted and made it meaningful. Justin Bieber also added to the conversation, and some people were like, wow, you're defending Frank, but you can't defend Haley. But anyway, he posted this on Instagram saying, I was blown away by Frank Ocean Coachella performance. His artistry is simply unmatched. His style, his taste, his voice, his attention to detail. I was deep moved it made me want to keep going and get better as an artist he continues to set the bar high and gave me a night i will never forget thanks frank and caitlin ray ended up posting this video of her and her friends reactions to frank's set there's no way because that's a lie the truth he literally was like let me show up an hour late and then not do the whole show <laughs> wait I guess the do lab we go. Wait, holy. So the next day, everyone was just kind of like, what happened? Everyone was talking about it. And this tweet was going around of what maybe allegedly happened to cause a delay in Frank coming out and the feeling of it being chaotic. The Festive Owl tweeted, I've been speaking with sources about exactly what transpired and how things went so far downhill Sunday for Frank Ocean and Coachella. So here you go. The stage production was supposed to and did contain an ice rink that was constructed and ready to go. Frank decided at the last minute that he no longer wanted it at all. All the people walking around him at the start of the performance were actually ice skaters, had been practicing for weeks, and were supposed to be skating as part of the production. Coachella had to deconstruct the approved stage that had been planned and signed off on for months in advance and melt the entire ice rink and then set it up how Frank decided today with no warning, which is what you ended up seeing and caused the hour delay. This all happened when doors had already opened for Sunday and people were securing their spot to see him. If the last minute changes weren't made, he wouldn't have performed at all, leaving the festival without a closing headliner. Frank also personally pulled the plug at the last second on the live stream, which left a very sour taste in many inside Coachella's mouths. Ultimately, and I quote, it just didn't seem like he wanted to be there, but was obligated to be there. Everything, including him, fell apart last minute. Don't expect to see any coverage from the festival about this set. Something that is unprecedented in the history of Coachella. The relationship is not in a good place right now. Coachella also hasn't posted anything about his performance, so it seems like they might just be super upset. They don't even want to promote it. And I'll honestly be shocked if he's even there this weekend for weekend two of the festival. I'm just really curious to see what he does if it's going to be the same thing, if he's going to go with his original plan and how people will feel if it's completely different. But I guess we'll just have to see. Aside from celebrity news at Coachella, there was some stuff going on in the influencer world. Alex Earl is a pretty big name right now on TikTok and she's getting huge opportunities as a result of that. And she was sent to Coachella by guests and the vlog squad was also invited by guests as well. So they were on the same private jet. They were staying at the same compound and as a result she ended up making content with david 
And when she posted it, people in the comments seemed pretty disappointed in her saying, David Dobrik jump scare, not Dobrik. Alex run far, far away. I was rooting for you, girl. After what he did to Jeff, girl, please not David. No, Alex, not David. I will say that since she did get sent by a brand, she probably did sign a contract to say that she had to make a certain amount of TikToks for them and with the other content creators that they hired to maximize press for the brand. And it just so happened to be David that was with her on this brand trip. So I think it's a little different than her being at his house. But to be so honest, I wouldn't be surprised if she was hanging out with them again. David and the vlog squad always seem to find themselves with who's hot and trending. So I can't be shocked by this, but these comments might have her reconsidering a future hangout because they were just so upset at her for being around David. But that's kind of a glimpse into the craziness that has been this past weekend. I certainly want to know what you guys think about this whole thing. Did you guys pay attention to any of it at all? Did you guys see any of the sets? How are you guys feeling on the Frank topic? Let me know all of your thoughts, including if you guys don't even care at all, because I do feel like there's a lot of people that did not care about the festival this year, and that's perfectly fine. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. I love you guys so much, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye, guys.